Today, I'm going to be comparing the GFX100 digital camera to the Mamiya 7 again. And you are not hallucinating, I literally made this comparison video, but I had more questions and honestly I found the last comparison really interesting just for my own personal enlightenment, so I did a bunch more comparisons and I'm going to share them with you today. But it's not strictly a rehash, I am making a few changes, so in addition to testing the excellent 80 f4 on the Mumia, I'll also test the 65 f4. And on digital, I'll show some examples with filters, so the examples I'm showing on digital will have some diffusion filters. I'm also using the new-ish Adobe version of the Fuji Nostalgic Negative Profile, which honestly when I read the description I thought it was made for me because they specifically call out American color photography of the 70s and 80s and mention like Stephen Shore, who's my absolute favorite photographer. In terms of the films I'm going to be shooting today, I focused on tonality and vibe and not on sharpness since I intentionally chose really sharp film stocks last time. So I shot Portra 400 because who knows why I didn't shoot it last time. Um, I shot some 400H because I've historically loved 400H. And I shot some FP4 because I've been really liking classic grained black and white films recently, and FP4 has this really aggressive toe in the film and really rich dark grays. There are full technical details below if you care, but I will just give a few caveats first. Any method of scanning color negative film is subjective, there is no objective way to invert colors, and so whether you consider the way that a Noritsu or Frontier on auto or Negative Lab Pro on auto processes it to be neutral, I don't know and don't care. I process the, these negatives the way that looks good to me, which is with quite a bit of warmth, for instance. I did use similar settings on all of them and also on the digital images, and in no case did I edit either the film or digital images very aggressively. It's generally just editing the tone curve and the exposure and a couple other things. I know there are some supposedly really good film presets out there. Personally, I would rather be 90 or 95 percent there and have full control, then like try to slavishly imitate a, the look of a particular film stock and not have the flexibility of doing my own processing. And finally, this is a 100% subjective non-scientific comparison and please make your own decisions.
So to wrap up, I have to say I really like the way Portra handles the highlights. It has that classic film glow and roll off where there's a ton of detail there if you want to pull it back. But if you let the highlights go a bit, you, they bloom in exactly the way you'd want them to. Unfortunately, I did a kind of crappy job grabbing the FP4 examples and the two comparisons I had weren't ideal, but I didn't think the film blew the digital away in those instances. I do think when I shoot black and white on film, I will probably be leaning more toward these classic cubic grain films because they have the vibe and character and grittiness and grunge that I want from a black and white film. And if they're less sharp than a T grain film, who cares? Because if I wanted maximum sharpness, I'd shoot digital anyway, right? Regarding the diffusion filters, I think they did a really good job here. They generally are really subtle, but in some cases, like the shot I have with the sun popping out from behind a building, the diffusion filter actually created way more bloom than a modern film lens and film did, which is kind of wild. I really like the Glimmer Glass 1 because it leads to basically no loss of contrast with a really organic looking filmic bloom. And it doesn't have that sort of misty kind of, I've heard it referred to as a soap opera effect, which unfortunately I can't fully disagree with that the Promist type filters have. The Glimmer Glass 1 is roughly comparable to a Black Promist 1 8th. It's very mild. And unless you're shooting directly into the sun or something, you will probably never regret having it on your lens. In general, in terms of color, I found that film images tend to have sort of an all over color cast. And a lot of the time I like it, sometimes I don't. The digital image is more malleable and when you push it warmer, it doesn't respond quite the same way as Negative Lab Pro. Personally, I care a lot about my editing workflow and going from program to program or treating different images differently really bugs me and takes me out of the zone and reduces my enjoyment. So I don't like to flatten my NLP to TIFF and then edit the TIFF if I, re if I don't really have to. And also I think that just editing film images heavily kind of defeats the point for me. I want the look that the film gives me. If I want complete control, I'd shoot digital. And one final nit is that in a lot of the images, I prefer the sky color of the film to digital. And I actually tried tweaking the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders for the digital image because I thought, oh, we'll just have to adjust the hue and luminance a bit. And that helped, but it actually didn't get me quite all the way there, um, possibly because of the camera profile I'm using. There were also a couple instances where the digital images, because of the profile, had more, for instance, color casts in the shadows, which is something you'd associate with film, because Portra 400 and 400H to some extent are so modern and relatively perfect for negative films. Anyway, yeah, that's about it. Um, hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think. Um, if there are more sort of differences you picked up on or if you had a preference. I think last time most people preferred the film, but also got some comments of like, well, the digital was honestly pretty close, which I would agree with. Sometimes you just want to step outside and know what you're going to get. Maybe you don't have the time to wait for a film. And I hope that some of you feel comfortable mixing film and digital together, shooting film when you want the experience or the look, and shooting digital when you don't have time to deal with it or you don't want to worry about which film rolls you have in stock, when you're going to get it processed, all that kind of stuff. I post these videos about once a month. If you enjoyed, you can subscribe. YouTube may or may not show you more of my videos and all the music images, video, etc. in this film are licensed under Creative Commons, so if you have something useful to do with them, please do. And finally, wanted to thank you for watching and hope you learned something, etc. And uh, I will see you next month. Bye.